I got laid off. I got fired. I got fired. But here's the thing. I was a binge guy. I remember seeing her at the local titty bar. I feel dirty right now just telling it into a microphone. We're broken around here. Working man, this sucks. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Working Class Souls podcast. I'm your host, Ed McGowan, here in the break room with my co-host, Josh Accardo. Edward, what's up, buddy? Happy uh, late Thanksgiving. Yeah, man. Uh, I know we're always kind of ahead of the game here, but... So I'm going to say hello. Is it? I think this hi. is airing. Uh, I think this is airing in a, a couple weeks. Who yeah. gives a fuck about Thanksgiving? Was like last month. <laughs> <laughs> Today we have a very special guest, a comedian who not only I I literally just met her. She embodies what this show is all about. I can already <laughs> tell. She's been on HBO Max, which is now called Max. Yeah. Please help me welcome Jess Levin. Jess, what's your worst? Job ever day job? Uh, I worked at Bob Evans. Ooh! Oh, I, oh, go, 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 go. we got a Bob Evans. Before you get into this, yeah. Do you fucking remember Bob Evans? Yeah, dude. Oh man, this <laughs> asshole. I love Bob Evans. You're gonna love. Were you a server? No, I worked in the back of the house. My best friend. Even better. House. Yeah, You're yeah. gonna love this. Right, so this <laughs> this Pennsylvania. We're on the road. We're on the road. All right, we're okay, we're on the road. We're looking for a place to eat. Right. To, we're about to start another like six hour drive for the next gig. Copy. Let me ask, what part of the country are you in? Where were we? It had to be Pennsylvania. I was going to say, was is it there, a Cracker Bell? Yeah, that's oh, usually, it's yeah. one of those two things, right? It was definitely a Bob Evans, and it was okay. Pennsylvania because it ties in with the story, okay, now cool. that I'm remembering. So, we're in there. <laughs> we're fucking oh, ordering it up. He's looking at the menu. Yeah. And he orders a steak. Oh, that's right, because we were near Pittsburgh. Yes. We are near Pittsburgh. So, this is this asshole at a Bob Evans. They had Evans. like a steak and eggs. They orders had like a steak a, and eggs, yeah. So, he orders a steak, Jess. <laughs> crackhead. And as he's eating it. He's looking at it as, hold no, 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 on, no. Though, hold on. When I ordered it, though, what I said to her. You didn't say what you're about, you think you said, because afterwards, you go, man, you can't give me a, because here's the, no, no, no. you're interrupting I the think, story. I think you don't remember it correctly, because what I said to the waitress <laughs> was, because my comment was, afterwards, she didn't get the order right. Well, what did you want again? Because I asked her, I said, uh, I'm in a Bob Evans, I'm yeah. ordering a steak and eggs, yeah. and I and I go, can you make it a Pittsburgh rare? <laughs> You're a, what are you, getting no plot? Like, where the hell do you think you're at? Ruth's Chris, bro? Well, that's what I was saying to him. Then like, when he's eating, he's like, it's <laughs> rare. <laughs> like, he's angry. Can you imagine? Like, can you know? Oh. Like, what are you doing? Like, would you, you know, know what that was, though, breakfast? when you were working back at the house? Would you have known if someone a came at a Pittsburgh rare? I would, because, just because I'm a classy human being. But, you know, <laughs> hey, I, I'm a classy bitch. But, yeah, I like good shit. I'm not fat from McDonald's, dude. I'm fat from foie gras. You know what I'm saying, man? I'm not, like, you know, there's a reason why this is. <laughs> All right. You and Eddie, like, Eddie's the reverse. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Like, you look at it. He's yeah. like, you know, he's, he's Eddie's eating the expired food. Yeah. I just love how I know, he always. Exactly. <laughs> like, I got a discount. I got a discount. Yeah, Pittsburgh you got a discount. You're gonna get like some freaking rare disease. What is Pittsburgh rare? Just for the audience that it's, it's not from Pittsburgh. It's yeah. like blackened on the outside. It's like burnt on the outside yeah. and rare on the middle. Because they all steal and, mill fucks. So and he's wanting a, a guy who's back there cooking is probably yeah. straight out of prison. Not probably. It is. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. Yes. You're about to find out. And it's all out of bags. All right. So now, okay, now okay. hip us to the Bob Evans game. I want to hear the this. The Bob Evans game. So listen, this is the deal. I was also in college at the time, too. Okay. So I had. What part of the country? Uh, we're we're in Melbourne. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, but Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had um, I have a January off from school. I went to Marymount Manhattan College, and we were off for January, right? So I picked up a job. My buddy was uh, still in high school, senior. He had a job at Bob Evans. He goes, Yo, they're looking for people in the back of the house. I was like, I cook, you know, being a line cook and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, All right, I'll do it. So I go do it, and everyone has ankle bracelets. Like, oh. it's all, like, every single person that works there. They're there for some freaking reason. Because either one guy was named Jenkins and, you know, Uncle <laughs> Sam didn't like how he did his taxes. There was a guy named Lamar or Jamar, and he was just there because of, I think he robbed a store. I don't remember, yeah. but they're all on, like, everyone had a story. There was a chick that was a lesbian there. There was a manager that wore, like, Winnie the Pooh, t Tigger. Like college, that was her management shirt. There's a guy that got busted for sleeping with an autistic girl in a hotel. Yeah, it got oh, fucking. It man. was. It got off. The, it went That's off like the, the rain, first dude. stop on the shipper train, <laughs> right? And, Bob and, Evans. and why are you me. there though? So I was just there because I wanted a month job, and it was a fucking fast job I got, and I just was like, whatever. And I'm reading in the break room, and I remember this girl. Her name was Nene. They called her Nene. She go, "How many kids you got?" I go, "None." She goes, I got five, and I'm 19. I was like, Jesus Ooh, Christ. Like bragging about it? Wow. Yeah, that, yeah. that, that must have been was, a great bro. intro with all the employees. So, yeah, here's this Jamar. Jamar uh, robbed yeah. a store. No, yeah. Jenkins didn't do his 
taxes, it's right? right. Nene yeah. has seven kids. What do you? Well, yeah. I, I study I at uh, Loyola Marymount. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was trying worst. to get my PhD in child development. I mean, you're right. like a regular person, right? And they called me Snowflake. They'd be like, yo, Snowflake. And if they've ever needed, like, the white gravy, they'd call, bring us the Caucasian gravy. <laughs> yeah. I love how racism exists there. Yeah, I love it. Such a great uh, way to so know what you're saying about. It's so good. It's so good. And then I would drive. I had a Mercury Sable. So I'd drive to the train station after work. I was like, all right, guys, let's, uh, I'll drive there. And they'd be like, because they're all from West Philly. So oh, I'd sure. drive yeah, the yeah, train yeah. so uh-huh. they can all catch the train to get home. And they're like, yo, Yo, Snowflake, pull over. We got a date with St. Paulie's girl. And they would all get their, like... St. Paulie's? Girl, What's St. Paulie's girl? Like, St. Paulie's <laughs> girl's a beer. beer. It's such a trashy... Trash, yeah. But it's like... Fucking Saint, but it's like their fucking Heineken of but fucking, The like, whole thing about St. Paulie girl is it... it Shows itself as like a highbrow. It does. You got right? a little Dutch girl. Yeah, oh, oh, right. Oh, 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 yeah. oh yeah. Like it's yeah. such trash. It's just beer. trash. And then they're, they're smoking spliffs. <laughs> it was. It was a lot of That's fun. So good. But it was just like it was just a shitty job because it was just. It was insane. And then even remember the video showing you of like welcome to Bob Evans. It was nothing compared to what was really going on. The place oh. doesn't even exist now. It's gone. Oh, really? oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. At? So, yeah. It's gone now. It's yeah, like, I think a Wegmans is over there now. That's like the Fridays. I worked at the TGI Fridays on South Street, and that oh, was that, insane, dude, insane. And now it's a bank. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. It doesn't last. Doesn't it, yeah. it, was, it was, it was, it was a little learning experience. It was yeah, a learning experience. I, you know, I, I like a waffle. This is like a road thing, because you're always looking for somewhere. Because you know your meal times and you're on the road are so right. awkward. It's right. like okay. We get into the city at three. I don't want to eat a giant meal before I go on, no, so right. I'll do a little of this, and then after the show, we'll go. And then let's, well, let's get to the next town closer, right. so we don't have to drive further. And like, so it's two a.m. We're eating dinner, basically. Right. right. And I go. And we go into a Waffle House. I now, because I've been in so many one-off towns, I now yelp the Waffle House if I'm going to go to one, because I've seen so many people get knocked out in Waffle House. Oh. Like it is, like. Especially on a Friday night after yeah. a gig and it's 2 a.m. and yeah. people are coming in after the bars close, yeah. it's notorious depending upon where you're going. Oh, yeah. A Waffle House, some shit's gonna pop off. Well, totally. And also, it's changed so much, right? Because you got like now a lot of cool late night establishments that are doing yeah. like. So now when you go to a, like, I mean, I haven't been to a Waffle I don't think I live, when I lived down south, I didn't really go to a Waffle House. So I didn't. With it's just literally the only thing open where you can I just, get. But I, I think like, the dying diners. It's like I think that's more like a Denny's up here, uh, where Denny's we're from though. Uh, Denny's, oh, Denny's. Denny's was a yeah. Denny's, not that bad though. Denny's, the Denny's was a on higher Route class. One in like Langhorn was wild. Dude. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wild. Get, there was yeah, one in PB Slam. in San Diego. We would go after the La Jolla Comedy Store shows. That one right. would get. Yeah, get, I got my car towed so many times in just because you can't park there. Oh, right. I mean, no parking. You, you know, you're 20. Years and there's old, a tow truck just waiting around, around the corner. There's the guy yeah, makes yeah. his whole nut for the month just right. towing assholes like me. Mm-hmm. I was right. so pissed. It cost me like 500 bucks to get it out. Oh, they, it, and I, I was like, it was like 500 bucks where it was like rent or this, get my truck out. Like it yeah. was or one of those. Yeah. 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 I got you. I had a situation like that in Woodstock 99. I lost my car keys. That was a bitch. Oh, dude. Oh, yeah. At Woodstock I was like 99. I was, Ooh. We, my, went, we went to my car and it was like the last day and we're just we're loading up before so we were loading up and my car wouldn't start because some asshole I forgot who it was which one it was but left the light on uh. the battery train uh. thank god I met Canadians we were getting bombed earlier we went to go see the. I woke up passed out and we watched the Tragically Hip I never even fucking heard of them mm. uh, they're like a big Canadian band oh, they were okay. getting bombed so I ended up meeting him. meanwhile they ended up parking next to me they got the car started up for me they're like yo Go back into the show. You'll be fine, man. When you come back out, you can leave. This is before madness began. So I went in. We went to go. I was like, let's go see Rusted Root. And I was doing this with my keys. And it the, it fell out of its thing and went flying. <laughs> Didn't even know until we got to the car. I was like, let's get out of here. And the key was gone, dude. It was insane. Did you get some of the hot wire shit? That's when I started crying. I was like, oh. this is awful. <laughs> it's the worst fucking thing ever. No bottle of water. No, fuck the rain things. Now you get it out of here. <laughs> That's like the worst when you can't. You want to go home so you bad. Can't. You're uh. dirty. You're. It's, you oh want your own bed God, so bad. Dude, so bad. Oh. It's awful. And man. it's like you don't even know how to solve. There's not even no. like a solve. To oh no. This. no. Like no. I don't even. Know, I don't have a key Triple to the car. Ain't getting in here. No. 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 no, no, no that's why. The, and it was already. It's in Rome, New York, which is. Yeah. So that guy was like, like that fucking meme. Like oh just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Up, you yeah. Know yeah. Right? Oh yeah. And I forgot how much we paid to get a key made, and then we just we flew out of there, and then we saw. You know the Coast Guard and all them coming in. <laughs> the well, you got our time then. <laughs> yeah, Lucky you, did. shit, dude. That yeah, was wild. Out. 
We got out just in time. I don't even know the whole story of that. It, 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 the people got stuck there? Is that... Well, no. The, 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 there was like riots. Like riots. Yeah, yeah, they made like yeah. a and documentary we, about yeah, it. Yeah, it I heard it. Yeah, it was pretty brilliant. So that's yeah, why it's really I got HBO Max cred. <laughs> oh, really from that? <laughs> yeah, I'm in the doc. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, nice. All right. I'll I thought you looked familiar. Yeah, yeah, right. Woodstock. <laughs> 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 I've probably seen those titties. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy is like it, it watching that because I'm 42, so that's my era. Of, oh, right. yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, I'm 42. Um, yeah. So it's like, you know, I remember <laughs> that being to me at that era of my life. I was 18. Yeah. I remember thinking, you know, this is like crazy because I was a, you know, I was an athlete. Uh, I don't know if you know that. I was a college quarterback. <laughs> he says it every podcast. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're the water boy. We copy. <laughs> and uh, so I was like more like straight and narrow. What are these guys oh. doing causing oh. destruction? Right. And then watching it now after being in the workforce and being mishandled and being misled and right. all the bullshit, you know, trying to get ahead and in, in a position of basically shit. Like right. you're trying to go from yeah. shit to a little less shit. Right. I understand completely why people would do that. <laughs> After well, watching yeah. that doc, you're like, do they talk oh. about that on the doc? Like, what was going oh, on yeah. at that time? Because I've heard some like interesting like talk about like because Fight Club came out around that time too. Like there was just the whole like unease, angst, I you know, the it music. In a while, but my takeaway yeah. and, and yeah. Jess, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. My takeaway watching the doc, you were actually there on the doc. Yeah. But my takeaway was that it got to a point where with all the drugs and all the crazy shit people were doing, right, and with the music genre is being so different. Like you're talking like oh, right. you got Nine Inch Nails and Limp Biscuit, and it was super aggressive. Like the way they really talked about the way the concerts were structured at the certain point in time that they uh, were structured at interesting. and okay. things happening. And then like the electronic dance tent is like a lot of those rapes happen. People are like roofing everybody. Like yeah. it just uh, and then uh. with them charging what they would charge for provisions right it's like they were trying to make you go broke yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah. and, fucked, yeah. and and that and that was like a big part of it and then it became yeah. like down with the corporations now you have all these juiced up kids high nuts thirsty hung all that shit so yeah, yeah, yeah it was a perfect storm of a lot of shit yeah the weather's it was hot as fuck um they were horrible at the whole thing of like they didn't like the bathrooms were disgusting they kept that's another thing they up. said yeah it was hot so it smelled like shit everywhere and then also like <laughs> their security were also all like criminals like oh, they hired, you know right so oh that's right like, they beat the shit out of a bunch of kids yeah, yeah just like that and also this is the era it was a perfect storm of everything of the time it's like a perfect times capsule of shit because i didn't even like when you look at the lineup i was i wish i was there for 94 94 had a better lineup than the 99 mm -hmm. one. the 91 had 90 99 had Limp Bizkit, who I fucking still can't stand. The 94 way. one was more my jam. 94 yeah. was more my jam. Yeah, yeah, you had yeah, great yeah. hip hop. You had great, yeah. like, it. that's when Nine Inch Nails was there. That's when all the good shit. Oh, that's when they were there. Limp Bizkit was 99. That's Nin right. Okay, yeah. sorry about that. It's okay. DMX. Get it right. Uh, County Crows. You had a couple great bands. But then other than that, you had Limp Bizkit. You had Kid Rock. And the guys that were interviewing me, they kept on, like, kind of being like, do you blame the music? And I'm like, no. It's Limp Bizkit. You know who you're hiring. It's just that I blame the boomer who really didn't have a clue because my right. buddy runs a music festival and now I see it from he just doesn't have a clue he's just some fucking 69 boomer head yeah. that was just all he's, like he's, yeah, a, he's a bean just, counter he's, yeah. he knows the numbers he just exactly and not even that he's just a fucking schmuck yeah, so it's right. just like he had no clue and he had the wrong people doing things and then there was like wood chips everywhere it just wasn't well done and this is the era before like you know, you had Bonnaroo coming up. Because I did, I it did wasn't Bonnaroo. like music festivals now are like yeah. a dime and a dozen. Yeah, they yeah, weren't yeah, yeah. like that. I did Bonnaroo in 2004 no. and it was fucking cool. Yeah, well, like Lollapalooza, exactly. I think, was the only one that I remember the only back one then. That was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that was not a camp. It was in Chicago. You'd go yeah. to the show and you'd go home and you'd come back, right? Was uh, What's the one that everyone is obnoxious about now? That they Coachella. Go to the desert? Coachella. Did they yeah. have that back then? Was that like the no. early stages of that? Coachella no. was like mid 2000s, I think. Yeah, I've never gotten into those. You know what? Now I've been to Austin City Limits, and that was one of the best. Festivals I heard that's I a good ever. one. That was really great. That was a lot of fun. Um, that was great, and I liked the eclectic jams that they had. Other than that, I, I'm I'm kind of like that. Ah. I like going I to like I a go, little. Like, I like club. going to concerts, but it's like I don't. I do the VIP section, bitches. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not I don't, going I'm with too the old for all this. I need the bathrooms. I need it like air conditioned. I need to, you know, I'm not waiting in line like a peasant. This brings up a, a really valid point to the show. I'm glad you brought this up because I've been finding that 
the experience of say a Woodstock or any uh, the Monterey Jazz Fest, all these right. like really great festivals right. from the 60s and 70s, you right. could be a working class kid who saved up a little bit of cash, right. hitched a ride, right. paid for the right. ticket and had an experience. Correct. Now they kind of weeded the they working did. class people out of it. If you can't, right. aff- and if you do get there, they gouge the shit right. out of you. So now when I want to go to a concert, do I, I'd rather be, I, I would love to buy a ticket and right. get to see, I have an experience, but now it's like basically going to the airport. Like, yeah, it it's is. the most uncomfortable, unless you're paying top dollar. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they, they string holding everything. Like, not to get, like, I'm a theater person too. They did it with theater first. Oh my God. It's yeah. Like back in the day, like, my dad's a sanitation worker and picked up garbage for a living, but he would tell you Arthur Miller plays. Yeah. He oh, would, cool. he was like, he would know, you know, theater. Yeah. You know, he that's knew awesome. Art. Garbage man that knows. Oh Arthur yeah, Miller he was plays. all like, yeah, he loved like a lot of these. And um, see, so my mother, born and raised Chelsea, didn't go to college, but like you know, sh- they know artists, they know these things, and that's just being native New Yorkers because there was a lot more blue collar people living with each other. Mm-hmm. Like my mom grew up on Nineteenth and Ninth Avenue in Chelsea, and in her building she had a guy that wrote for the New Yorker, um, a violinist that was at Lincoln Center Jeez. and a cop. That's the era and of New York. It's a melting pot. That's the, that's melting the true pot. melting pot. Everyone yeah, was living on top of each cool. other. So everyone kind of knew each other. So like we all, and the new understanding of culture and art and you'd go to theater and that's what you do. You take your girl and you'd go to a play yeah. and that's what you do. Now it's like, it's freaking tw- forget about it. It's like $200 yeah. because you know, whatever Taylor Swift is playing some part. So it's just it's the I saw that in theater first the breakdown of that yeah and then everything else follows music films everything else and it you know what it does too is even with the the way politics are structured I think it also gets that blue collar guy to not want to go to those things anymore when right. I remember there was an era where I'm not saying that my dad would sit around talking about Broadway plays with his buddies at work no. but they would have more access because it right. would hit their pocket yeah their demo more because. Like, oh, did you see that new film by so and so? Like, just right. they would yeah. talk about films yeah. right. and yeah, yeah, yeah. music, and they, it was just a lot more dialogue to be had right. about art. Your dad didn't go see it; somebody that he right. knew went yeah. to see it saw it. Now there's nobody, no, no. even close to like because we don't have those kind of because then, then you're right. affiliated with. Oh, you're affiliated with that. Right. With that shit, whether oh, it's woke like, yeah, or yeah, far right. right, like who yes. you affiliated with that yeah. now? Yeah, 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 well, you know, so like too, yeah. back in the day, you're like Arthur Miller, Death of a Salesman, which is like the quintessential play of the fallen of the everyday man. Yeah, and that was what's. It wasn't a king. It was just an everyday salesman, blue collar man. Mm-hmm. That is the fall of him. And um, now they did the Lehman trilogy, and I wanted to punch every freaking person in there watching this because they're all like, mm. yeah. <laughs> 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 And I'm like, you know, you have no culture or nuance, you dumb fuck. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you read the latest New Yorker? Yeah, you're doing you it for know? the likes. You have no clue. Yeah. You're doing it for the likes, and you're doing. And it was the worst play I've ever seen. And everyone's just like, it's self bloated bullshit. Yep. Because no one thinks they're really on their own, and no one wants to be the guy that being like, this sucks. Yeah. And I think that's another reason why when we get up on stage, there are so many self celebrators. Right. You know, I was watching someone's clip the other day, and he's obviously doing crowd work. And the woman is like, <laughs> get out. <laughs> and the woman in the audience that he's, you know, marking, you know, his yeah. mark is yeah. yelling out bad punchlines to the joke that he's yet to say the punchline for. Right. And I'm thinking like, this is what our job is literally going to be in five, in five years. I pray right. this is not going to happen. Oh, but like, posting that clip. God, but I feel like that's kind that's, of, I, I just got anxiety. It's like with Broadway when shows people now, are like shouting out punchlines. Hey, like, if your Broadway show doesn't have a sing along. Yeah, and not or, or if it's ri- maybe right. if it's written by like uh, one of the the big heavy hitters, right. but for the most part, if it doesn't have a sing along, that shit ain't going up on Broadway. Well, <laughs> that ain't happening. Right. Well, it's so funny you said that because there's a new musical now that was done by Talking Heads guy. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, the people are freaking out because he didn't want an orchestra. He has it like he. Has I love that David music. David Burn. Byrne. Byrne, yeah. Uh, so which is kind of annoying because orchestras they're unionized. Yeah. Uh, so it's like you're taking jobs away from. Because he's, he's electric, right? He's a lot electric, of keyboard so it's all and yeah, back stuff. And it's like, dude, you need to have spaces for these things, but also you can't do it like anything. You give them an inch, they take a mile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like now with the crowd work, like I like crowd work when, when you're connecting with people. Yeah, right. But everyone's starting to post like, oh yeah, it's all about you know, like this conflict, conflict, yeah, conflict. Yeah, yeah. Like, conflict. oh, you see what kind it's of war I'm creating? It's conflict. Fake. It's like, dude, what about? Us connecting with yeah, us, yeah, 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 right. It doesn't all have to be like, yeah. you know. And I'm an aggressive bitch, yeah, right. But at Amen. the same time, same here, you know, you know. I am myself I like, an aggressive bitch. Yeah, 
So, you know, but for me at the end of the day, if you're not making a connection, I mean, what the fuck are we doing? Then why did I start this? I mean, I I feel like (laughs) I'm doing my best because I listen to all the shows. It's the first project I've ever done where I've been able to like, okay, I'm finally being an adult. I'm going to listen to every episode because it's the product I'm giving an audience and I'm expecting you to listen. So why, why am I not listening? Right. Right. And I'm like, okay, please try to find a way not to go into how much you hate the current state of events of your oh, job. I know. <laughs> I know. We delve. We we dip every every, every, every episode. We oh, dip. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. We have to pull and ourselves I'm like, out. Why am I going to yeah. stop the train? I feel like there's a balance here, and I feel like we're doing good with it. But I do try to consciously not do it. But it's so hard not to talk to another comedian about the reality because I feel like yeah. they're so intertwined with what the brand of the show is. But hey. I have to say, it's very interesting to me that Jess, you uh, have such a Broadway background. I didn't. I wasn't aware that you had. Like such a so have you worked on Broadway? Um, no, I'm hoping to go back. I um, but you mean go back? I know, go back, go back to. I did theater. Oh, you did theater, back, but I never Broadway. I never got there. Oh, okay. And like but, on stage or yeah, like, on stage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Like nice. I, did, I was. Um, I went to Marymount Manhattan College. I like directing and theater because for me, theater was a protest. It wasn't this like, nah, yeah. you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. like you know, I got into like South African apartheid theater and political theater, and it was a way of like communities that had no money you you always had a stage mm-hmm. and back in the day it was a way of communication it was a way of education it was sure. a way yeah, yeah, yeah. um well, you know, it was the original connecting. influence it was the original yeah, yeah it was the yeah. original influence like I mean, Shakespeare you had the guys that were going in there and they were you know it was just for me that was punk rock you yeah. Know? yeah 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 now it's you know I don't like the hand honey I mean don't get me wrong I like what's that story there's a space the for all these things there's but... a space for all these like what's that story there's art there's yeah. nuance yeah. but I'm freaking watching nuance Macy's is Day the Parade <laughs> right yeah which no one respects now yeah. I'm watching the Macy's Day Parade and I see back to the freaking future <laughs> and he's like it's gonna work and these like hot bitches I felt like I was watching a Simpsons you know what though I was like is this really happening right now watched that and it wasn't as bad as the other ones they were showing that's what was scary it was like i'd actually rather see that than the four other ones they showed before it the broadway shows it was crazy oh wow because everything is moulin rouge changed the game for broadway oh yeah you could literally uh, plug and play any star for six months three months whatever into into like the lead roles one of them has to be a broadway star to carry the other one like i saw i don't want to bad mouth this person because i think it's a hard job to do but and they, it, she served her purpose as the lead, right. but mm-hmm. the one I saw, at Moulin Rouge, it was like, it's just a sing along for yeah. all these tourists to sing with me. Yeah, like, I want to uh, yeah, see. My, it's like cruise shop. Because yeah. my, my wife yeah. and uh, mother in law go to Broadway all the time, and I got right. them tickets to Moulin Rouge, and man, they were really disappointed. Like, yeah, really, well, it's not great. Really it's, really really it's either that's the problem. There's no middle ground. It's like, listen, there's space for everything, but what happened to the middle guys? It's like it's either Disneyland, or it's self righteous. Like, yeah. you know, and it's like, where's, we're not having a conversation anymore, people. It's either mm. like completely to the left or completely to the right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? No. And I, and the theater to me has always been what you're saying. Like yeah. a place where the any man can go. You can have go, you gone right? to a, a lot of theater? I've only, I've I'm, only I been mean, to like I, uh, four or five I, things. I've Maybe been in things. plays in the, at the Fringe Festival. I've been oh, okay. a theater actor for a lot of my life. Oh, uh, oh I've I done some Shakespeare, but I, I like a lot. My wife it was very... She was a music and theater major, so she's very into theater. Right. Uh, so I would go to a lot of. I, I really love one man shows or one act mm. plays. Yeah. Because uh, cool. my my uh, unless I know the play, yeah. it's really hard for me to sit there for two and a half hours. This is back oh. in the day, right? Where you right. would go to like, where Babigula did his uh, one man show. Yeah. Babigula did his show uh-huh. over there off the village. You know, like right there off the yep. stop, the bleaker stop on the six train, yep. whatever that yeah. theater mm-hmm. is. Uh, I went there a couple times. I saw. I love places I saw like that. Right. There. That was yeah, the yeah, coolest yeah. part of New York City is doing that. Right, that's really cool. That's what's made it really cool. Like, yeah. um, I saw. Like, I'm big Martin McDonough fan, and he he's the one who did um, Three Billboards and uh, what's the latest movie that he did that everyone loved. Um, oh, Three uh, the Billboards. Ban- the Banshees. Oh. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he yeah. was originally a playwright. Okay. And he wrote fantastic. That's why if you watch Banshees, it's got it, a very it got to play. It's very yeah. Play. Um, the, and um, I went to go see one of his plays that I've been um, what the hell was it called I forget I forget what it's called it was a great play I loved it but it was half full and it pissed me off because it's just a very his dialogue is so awesome mm-hmm. and even the set was really cool another movie that uh, was played that I went to called The Ferryman and I can't remember the name of that playwright um, that was awesome there's like a knife uh, 
a throat gets cut. Whoa. This was about the troubles in Ireland. In oh, Ireland. okay. So it's like, it's got the 70s rawness to yeah, it. Yeah, right. So it opens up and there's like punk music and you hear a helicopter and you're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I just right, got a little like, chill. Like, chair. Yeah, I yeah, know, yeah. I got like, you know, yeah. and that gets my juices going. Totally, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. And uh, I get, I like, I don't like the corny shit. I'm not gonna be like, West Side Story was not corny. That was about like neighborhoods of people like Puerto Romeo and Juliet it, on the like, street, right? On the street. And it actually had an edge to it. I don't find everything's got to be either corny or edgy's kind of like Matt Rife edgy. And I'm like, this is not edgy. <laughs> this is bullshit edgy. This is not like you're not going for it. Like what fucking you, do it. What are you what are you doing like work wise? How hard has it been to stay working and pursuing stand up right now? Kind of difficult. I work in film and TV production. That's um, so hard to do a stand up career while doing that stuff. Well, that's what took me so long. I was working on set for years. I worked on a lot of shows, and then on set um, as a producer, uh, gaffer, no, like he set PA. So I was always oh. on. I helped my first AD, so I was uh-huh. his right hand man. Oh, right mm-hmm. on. So I'd help run set. Sometimes my first team PA. I worked on Kevin Can Wait, and I helped get the actors ready. Um, I was either a key set or a first team person uh-huh. for yeah. a long time, and I almost got my days to become an AD, but I didn't want to be an AD. That's the worst. AD's job. a lot of die. work, dude. So much work. I, uh, a friend of mine so had a roommate. That's their. That was their ultimate goal to be an AD. I God don't think him. they are. They've been in the game a long time as a PA. Uh, but yeah. uh, you know, you got to be pretty good to get those kind of gigs, even though it's like the worst gig. Well, yeah, they got to trust you. Yeah. The more the clo- the better you get, the closer you get to set. Mm-hmm. You know, when you first start, I was working on Dead Man Down, which one was one of the hardest jobs I ever worked on in Philly. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. Dead what Man what do they make you do? Like what's so kind of the I stuff had a you're lock doing? Of a condor, like you know, so you have the light on, and then it was like, all right, we're rolling, and then I have to be like, yo, guy, turn it off, and he turn off the condor, and I stood up there in Fishtown for 12, 13 hours just to tell a guy to turn off his <laughs> condor and on. Oh. Condor? You yeah. mean like a bird? Like no, a condor. Like a fucking those machines that have like <laughs> from California. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they invented condors. <laughs> Am I saying those no. fucking things? Where What's they're, a they're, condor? Like this guy, no, these guys that, that that have like the cherry pickers things that are on the top, and then they would have a light on top of it. Oh, so, the oh. noise. Oh yeah, oh, so the light doesn't affect the shot. So yeah, well the light's in for the shot. It's like a four K. Motors oh. running and sound can pick up the motor, so I have to tell them you'll turn it off. Oh, gotcha. oh got it. So got you it. would turn off the motor. So you're saying he brought a condor? Yeah. <laughs> Bird, and I, gotta punch it. I think you she's know? saying she's like now turn it off. Put the put the yeah. cloak, put yeah. the black put sheet the on it. Sleepy time. Sleep. Like a parrot. <laughs> turn that condor off. <laughs> Whoa, she's she's shut up, she's got the big like, ah. gloves on. She's got the big gloves on. <laughs> this is Ed space. No, that would be a union job. <laughs> like a like a bird. <laughs> I hope I'm calling it right. I think it's a condor. That's what I knew it as. Oh my god. So yeah, I would so do that. When you decide to work in, because f- I feel like people when they start, especially people my age. Yeah. You get a lot of misled info because there's no internet or no like right. best practices to research. There's no Google when right. you're, you know, when I was starting, there was no Google. So it wasn't like you could research how to become a comedian or an actor. Right. You were like taking the word for, you know, some guy who maybe right. said he's an actor, right? Right. So <clears throat> I've heard people say, like, you should get into, like, get on set. You should right. know how the set works. Right. But. I don't have any time to pursue no. doing this job. Like no. you're on set for 16 hours a day. Right. No. So I was for a while. Like, did I, that fuck with you? Like, I don't. Yeah. I want to be on the other side. I don't want to be here. Well, I, I gave up on myself doing being in front because I was just like, it's not gonna work. Why? I just like I went to college and I just saw these like you know hot chicks and they're fine and they're getting parts and I just. And theater school is not such an open thing. Oh, yeah, they theater, I would imagine. Favorites. They really do. My wife experienced the same thing. She yeah. said something similar to me. Yeah, yeah. and then they kind of put you on the back burner. And I had a scholarship, and my parents didn't go to college, but I was not happy there, but I didn't know what to do. Mm-hmm. So And you I, have a scholarship, so they're paying for your so school. they're paying for my school. But so they're not like, letting you. But I can't, so I felt stuck, your and thing, I didn't know yeah. what to do. So I was like, well, as long as I'm in New York, I'm okay. But it was New York was changing while I was, you know what I mean? It was mm-hmm. changing so fast, man. So it's like theater started dying down. It wasn't because like the shows weren't popping up anymore. Yeah. They're getting more expensive. Like the original shows you're talking Di- yeah, about. Disney's yeah, Disney's buying up more and more oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 9-11 happened, so then like, you know, money got tight then and yeah. then only the big things they wanted. So like I didn't know how to fit in with what's going on. So 
I started. We started a theater company. My friends from South Carolina. We started one, but of course, no one wants to come see theater in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. No, no. They're golfing, getting hammered, yeah. and fucking, or going to the beach. They're not going to see <laughs> me do Sam Shepard plays, <laughs> and no, you know, like some prolific. You know, they want. You know, like, yeah. hot cat you know, on a hot tune roof. Know, cat on a tune roof. <laughs> yeah, they want, like they want, stop doing blow off that like, beer girl's tits. Gene O'Neill. I mean, what the fuck? Hello. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seriously, you know what I mean? I'm out there like Catherine Hepburn. I I'm, not, yeah. I'm just like, what are we doing here, guys? So um, finally, I was like, well, fuck it. I just want to work in film and TV. I love films. I'll just like, let me see if I can make a living off that. And I just started working on sets. And I just what happened, I was just like, all right. And when you keep getting jobs, you're like, this is probably the path where I'm supposed to be going. You because know? it's the one thing that they're actually choosing you for. Yeah, they're choosing me for. So I kept And you on feel doing like it. you're close. And I'm close. I'm, I'm like, on oh, set. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking to these set. famous people. I'm inviting Colin Farrell to set. I'm, one know, I'm funny around. exchange. I'm in there. Yeah, exactly. And it keeps on happening and happening. So and wrong, happening. by and the way, everyone. To, so wrong. <laughs> I went to LA. I did work in LA. Same thing happened over and over again. And I'm like, fuck me. And I never, like, I remember in college, my friends would be like, Levin, you should do stand up comedy. And if I would have gone then, I would have been in this circle of Amy Schumer and that because sure, yeah. that's my age right, group right. but I just didn't until six years ago I met I was working on Kevin Can Wait as a first team PA I, they only needed me four days a week and to fulfill the f- one day I had an awesome boss named Andrew Wheeler who said to me hey do you want to learn how to do accounting and you get out of this PAing shit you wake some real money oh, like a line get producer. health insurance Kind of like that. Okay. But like, I help payroll. So I pay oh. people. So you get, like, is it a union thing? or? It's, uh, well, this is what they did. The studio is the fucking scumbag. Mm, yeah, they are. They bought the, there's two, there's a union 161. They suck, though. I love unions, but they're doing a shit job. Yeah. So what the studios did, they created a motion picture health um, pension plan. So if you work for them, you don't have to do 161. I don't have to pay any money. They right. would pay for your insurance and shit. Right. But I recently got out of it because comedy starting to take now that job I can't keep up with now. It became a point where now I can't keep up with Because you have that. to have a certain amount of hours, right? To, well, to I have be... hours I was in, but like I can't like I went and worked on the bear and I just like Well, they I, need you twenty four seven, right? It's like mer- emergency well, kind of. line like, items, all this shit that you're trying shit. to deal out. So I'm like I'm like going to do spots at night and getting hammered because it's Chicago. Yeah. And uh get up and I'm like 8 o'clock in the morning going for COVID tests I'm like it was two different worlds because you have now, to be on set for those jobs um, kind of sort of I think they wanted me to but then I started you know going back to the hotel early oh. and working from there and I think they kind of were like well why the fuck are we paying this bitch to yeah, be yeah, there yeah. and I'm like I get it you know what sure. I mean but I made good money on that job Yeah. but then after that I was like I can't my boss is awesome but he was like I can't you're getting now too much into uh, you know so I started I'm working on uh, payrolls on Fallon now just because oh. it's stationary, you could stay kind here. Kind of, sort of. Even that's still annoying, which I'll gladly say on there. It's still annoying. What, like working from home? Uh, working on payroll for oh, oh, oh. Yeah. this. It sucks. I, it's, yeah. it's, I'm seeing how the sausage gets made, and it's you not know, pretty. Yeah, 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 Especially yeah, yeah. with this whole strike and shit. Sure. Yeah. My wife does. My, yeah. my wife sees everybody's uh, salaries and stuff like that at, at where she works, it's and it's it's it kind of like... You, you have to like separate because sometimes like when somebody like sends you like the stupidest email and you're like you make four hundred thousand right. <laughs> and these are the emails you yeah. send like it's like you, well you, you I'm I'm an mind. asshole I don't I don't lie at all I'm just like this, well I think I, the I, payroll I'm, people have I'm to thinking, have that attitude though right well, I feel like every payroll person I've ever met is kind of a hard ass. Yeah, you got to kind of like just cut it out. Emotionless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly, right. There's yeah, a separation you got to have. I get caught up, especially, <laughs> well, because I do, especially when you, I see them ripping off PAs. I'm like, go fuck oh, yourself. Right. So I get mad. And I'm like, yeah. why are you guys paying them this way? And they're right. like, that's how we do it. You know, that and should like, be a rule. You. They should hire someone that is in the, like has worked with the people you're fucking over. Like right. there should be a law or like right. who you're most likely to fuck over. Right. There's like a buffer who has either worked that job before. Right. Yeah, 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 You know, but I guess they have that and you could corrupt that too. I guess well, there are you know buffers that too? exist, but I just feel like they don't. The problem is with these, especially with film TV, I've noticed like you get payroll people and they're nerds and they've never worked a day on set. So they have no clue who does what. Right. Yeah. So then you get a union guy that comes in there and they're like, oh, what? But for me, they sometimes wouldn't expect, like a team would come in and be like, oh, do you? And I'm like, yeah, all right, guy, let's go. So yeah, now, yeah. Let's talk. Because you can I mean, speak yeah, yeah. the language. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? That's why my boss liked me. Because yeah. he's like, I've driven a truck. I've done it all. You know, I grew up with unions my whole life. My dad was a sanitation worker. My uncle's sanitation worker. Yeah. So you know the ins and outs of how so union like, helps I know and how, how they fuck union, you, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, and especially now that I'm doing this job that's more corporate. I, the, the importance of unions to me, I'm a pro-union. Mm-hmm. I, I'd rather get fucked by a guy I can vote out 
sure. yeah. than yeah. matter of how much shareholders that I have. For yeah, a yeah, yeah. That's a great NBC. point. Yeah, yeah, really yeah. Is. You know what I mean? At least I'm I can an vote that guy, guy out. And I'm not, I, you know, all my day jobs have been office, we, right. you know, so I, the only time I've ever had a union <clears throat> is I worked as a gym manager, manager for this really prominent uh, location here in the city. I can't name, yeah. but they had a union. Right. And I wasn't a part of the union per se, but I had to monitor to make sure the people that worked underneath me yeah. were abiding by the union's rules. Right. Like there was one woman, uh, I might have told us on the air before, but like she would dust and get on a stepping stool and then fall off of it. Oh, right. Like no every way. year. Yeah, she would take a fall. <laughs> so it's, so it's like shit like that. They're like, hey. I love that shit. Don't. I, I fucking don't. love it. <laughs> and I, and I respect money, her <laughs> for it. And I was like, there, that's one like my first story. Like, hey, when she is here in the morning and she brings out that stepping stool, <laughs> tell her no. Just because she didn't speak very good English. She'd have to go, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is amazing. She's wearing like a, just a really heavy yeah. coat. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Like, no, 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 no. Like it's okay. It's yeah, okay. she's got the whole like you know, the gymnast the shit. Towels. Exactly. You know. What I, mean? <laughs> bad towels. I guess like I wasn't she's there. Bad she's like brawny <laughs> fucking paper towels. She's like, up to her. Banging some guy in the fucking little spy area to get the bath towels. <laughs> <laughs> like evil can evil. I know this shit. I yeah, know totally, man. It's amazing. So good. She's a fucking gymnast. I guess the uh, first time she fucking, she did it a number of times. But okay. the first time, I think they said that she really got she into it. Took a she hit. Didn't, she she took didn't plan a it. She huh? took a hit. She didn't yeah. plan it. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. She mankind it. Ooh. Oh man, that's right. Wow. It was right by like uh, it was back in the day where you had those big ass uh, on wheels Xerox right. copy. And she, oh. and I think her head hit the top. Caught the edge of one of those. Damn. Ooh, dude. She was that's out for like six months. <laughs> well, that's what probably started it. It was like, that's what probably dawned her. It's like finding fire. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What's I, I just imagine her prepping with her family. Like she was living in the Bronx. Yeah. Prepping, like putting all the stuff on her husband. Like, yeah, I know. Like, the towel exactly. In. It's like today's the day. Like, slapping her shoulder I like, a, like I a football player. Yeah, seriously. I know, seriously. The kids are coming Going, in. I just, know, really. Just seriously. drilling her in the, the gut. Totally. She runs the tunnel, fucking runs up. <laughs> Put the fuck in your pods in. She's yeah, ready to roll. Rolling, I mean, that's what I imagined, man. She right. was so hardcore. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's my great. only experience with unions. <laughs> oh, like, right, right, It was right. like these dudes, if they do not get a 15-minute break, yeah. they, oh, they yeah. will lose their shit. Right, right, right. I work with this guy, and he would take a lot more than a 15-minute break. Yeah, trust me. There's some, there's a lot of scumbags out yeah. there. They really abuse they the abuse system. The oh, I worked, system. In, I worked in factories where, uh, yeah, the... Um, the abuse of the break yeah. is just like the break doesn't start until you get caught being on break. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, somebody right. like walks That's by is like, yeah, <laughs> totally. you're like, yeah. OK, I guess break just started. Right. Yeah. But in, in film TV, though, there's much more um, urgency. There's a, well, there's a beauty in it in the sense that there's it, it's so awesome how it's done. It's like like the first person who goes to the lunch, right? Lunch, the half an hour for the break doesn't start till the last union person takes sits down. They went through the line and they sit down. Oh, cool. And then there's a PA there that clocks it. It's like, okay. And there's a shop store. So there's an order to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, so that's it's different. a beauty. That's protocol. It. And it that makes pro- things it, run it more may, effective. And it, I'm into it that. It does. And it's very effective and it's awesome how they it do it. It is cool being on set because I've been on set for a couple of things. And it's cool to see that, like, I was on set and I went to go get some lunch and everybody's like, no, 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 no. Uh, not till the union. Not union. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah they yeah, they yeah. eat first. Yeah. And then just watching all those guys. And it's just the whole litany of like the the makeup lady, the dude who was like yeah. running fucking cables, right. the, yeah. the it's a whole world. cinematographer. Like That's it's what just the whole like the, yeah, you know everybody's kind of equal. Yeah, yep. but like, yeah. well, the, well, there's cool. the below the line and the above the line. Even the way the vernacular is used for set, it's funny. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's right. There yeah. is two lines. There's two yeah, lines. Right. There's, so, yeah. w- so what happens is, um, that's why people got annoyed. Like, I get annoyed when I talk to like people that like the actors and the writers that went on strike. Uh-huh. They're like, some of them are like, it was great to take a break, and I'm like. Okay, are you well, below the line? Cause yeah, you're not below the line. So there's a lot of us that got hurt yeah. by it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a lot of people that we've had time off got fucked yeah. bad. Because, you know what I mean? You guys got some time off and you got to pick at your line. Sure. And you're going to make your money. But there's still... So the guys now are talking now... I don't know if this is true, but their contracts are up in July. And they're going to be like, all right, you did a deal with them for this. What about us? Yeah. Oh. You know? Because... 
it's the truth, man. And that's what good annoys me about everyday people that get annoyed by the Hollywood thing. I get it. But you got to remember, there's a lot of union people behind this. And there's a lot of people that are blue collar people. Yep. Yeah, on paper they make a lot, but they live in New York. That's so the, that, that money goes out the yeah, freaking money. That's yeah, what we yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. on the show all yeah. the time. Is like, you know, you want to talk about middle class or working class. Yeah. People here working class, they automatically think poor. That's yeah. not always the no. case. No, My no. dad was middle working yeah, class. He makes six he figures. Went to college, yeah. 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 yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. It's yeah. nothing to do with no. if, you know if, if people really like. Oh well, uh, well that's a whole different bracket. No, it's not. It's the people you've been eating. Yeah, like, they're the ones that've been paying for all this shit, right. bro. Yeah. Don't you think the buildings got built? Yeah, assholes? man. Yeah, right. The backbones. Are they're fucked. stupid. Well, it's because I think also too you have more and more people are um, like my parents didn't go to college. They had. What, what they had was they had working jobs that they can use their hands and plumbers and all that stuff. Or you go stuff. into what your dad did and, yeah. and hopefully he can you get you a job a at his company. And yeah. you, or you do that, yeah. right? Now it's like people, a lot of like kids, their parents went to college so they're becoming these lawyers or like, I don't fucking know, bankers or whatever yeah. these people, these nerds do. <laughs> they're getting away from these kind of blue collar jobs yeah. Yeah. and unless you're in major cities, they don't exist. Like my brother's doing, um, he retired from sanitation but he's out in PA just doing some stuff there now. Yeah. And they pay the loaders nothing because they're not unionized out oh, there. Oh, wow. Right. So they can so, get away with cutting so, they get away so, with cutting many, so much yeah, shit off. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's the thing about unions. As a PA, I'm not in the union, but because I have a <laughs> union standard, I'm not going to get totally fucked yep. because these guys protect me. Sure. Right. And that's yeah. what the union does. Because they, they exist. It gives a benchmark. It yep. gives a benchmark right. so I don't get fucked. Yeah. Yep. So that's that's yeah. what's important about that. That's crazy. You can't yeah, you, throw the baby without out the bathwater. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. That's so, crazy to think about because no one, everything is everything. Yeah. You know, and I was telling people this, like I don't book many union jobs as an actor, but right. I book a lot of independent jobs and a lot of good money ones sometimes. Right. And I was noticing during the strike, I wasn't getting many of those calls anymore because right. people above me right. that were working other jobs right. are now taking my jobs. Correct. So I was getting the sh you know the lower you get the less yeah. you're getting now because everyone moves down a peg yeah. exactly because you're less protected yeah and that's what happens same with us in comedy right you have mm -hmm. all these chooches that are like oh I'm not acting now I guess I'll go do something yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's right time. they took yep. so much stage it's time not, yep. you know all so these it's people like, like one uh, good place credit or something yeah. like now I'm gonna stand up uh, right yeah. exactly and some produce bar show producer of course you're gonna you're take gonna someone that has a credit exactly of course so it's like the democratization of online stuff it's a good thing but also like anything it's got its yin and the yang so it's like you're getting these assholes that are falling but if you don't have the structure and the backbone like for comedy or anything that is you're really good at the end of the day you won't last it's about the yeah. long game anyway yeah i have to say this is the most highbrow educational <laughs> episode we have ever had i really when when i was like jess you want to come on i did not think it would be this like informative smart. i feel smart today <laughs> The condor guy. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, yeah. Bert. Just yeah, matter to do something that no one's ever done for it. <laughs> no blowjob in the history of Ed's life has made him feel this alive wow. <laughs> and alert. I, I, I do. I do want to talk about one one thing before we wrap though, yeah. like because you were talking about uh, the uh, Bob Evans job and yeah. um, and you had a nickname Snowflake. Yeah, Was, yeah, yeah. Is that? Um, what like is that a top five nickname you've had? I imagine you've probably had some nicknames at jobs. Couple. Yeah, I've had a couple. I I had a shirt that said Spoo that my brother got from Savannah, Georgia. Spoo like S P O O. Yeah, O O, and it was like a little blob that had arms coming out of it. So friends would call me Spoo. Spoo. Like, hey, Spoo. I was called the dude for a while from the Big Lebowski because I wear pajama <laughs> pants all the time and That's I didn't give awesome. a fuck. That's great. What job was that? When I was called the dude, I was working at um, a restaurant. Yeah, I was working at a like, but a high end one. I did a lot of Michelin star shit too. I oh, worked nice. From bottom oh, to the top. I was like a like a line cook. Um, I was a what they call garmage. So oh. I would do um, desserts. I sold a bag of weed to the chef. That's how I got the job for nice. real. And weed uh, brings a lot of people together. It does, especially Drugs in restaurants. General. Exactly, especially restaurants, in restaurants. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. And um, but that was a fun one. That was a fun one. Um, and I learned how to really cook there. That they, uh, yeah. because they were all very. They're trained. I worked at a high, le high so level. they place taught too me a that lot was of like, stuff. I was a waiter there, and um, I, and like three people sold cocaine there. But, oh, but yeah, I course. also learned how to make like. Fucking Volute. cool. Yeah, like well, real, not the. Um, yeah, I don't know what that is. Okay, <laughs> you learned the mother sauces. I also waited tables there too, and I worked the front of the house. I did a lot of jobs yeah. there, man. I also was doing dolphin safari tours then too. Oh, 
Yeah, I was like working with the in Dolphins. Hill, yeah, dude, I was working in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, and this is my big time blow phase, bro. I was doing a lot of cocaine, a lot of it in Hilton Head. Yeah, yeah. With a the lot Dolphins? of cocaine in Hilton Head. Not with, with the Dolphins, Dolphins interve- intervening but with you. No, yes. I would come to a job. It would be like six in the morning, and I'm getting, I'm just leaving the bar. Oh, to go some of the Dolphins. rails, and now I'm trying to fucking. Te- and now I'm on going on a fucking boat. To give tours to people from Ohio. Oh, you got to go find the dolphins. I, oh, yeah, it's we not go like in an boat. enclosure where you're jumping no, in with them. No, okay. I wish that'd be awesome. Uh, I'd probably I sober my that. ass wanna... up because salt water was great when yeah. I did that. But no, I had to go up there and we'd go on a, like a oh, freaking, a what boat, are you, like on this boat, hung over as shit, hot, and I'll be like so fucked up. I'm still fucked up. And I'm like dealing with Ohio tourists. They're like, how are we going to feed it a Kit Kat? I'm like, no, you fucking idiot. And I'm like, and I just moved, I just went there. So she's like, all right. So and the, the captain, she was awesome. Holly, beautiful, sweet person. And she didn't really like talking to people. Like I was much more animated. Yeah. So I went up there. I don't know the geography of the freaking South Carolina. Yeah. I'm like, You're winging the it. water. Yeah. You're on it. Yeah. And it's like, there's the cowboy you sound. And then they'd be like, look, a dolphin. I'm like, yeah, good. Let it go, guys. Keep on growing the show, man. The worst is when it was like they weren't around. And they're like, where are they? And I'm like, I, I got to keep on talking. You ever do the fucks. fake alley? Oh, you see that one? Okay. Oh, oh, you missed it. <laughs> Jess, plug where you're at, please. Uh, you can get me on Instagram at jlevcomedy um, on all platforms, Twitter and all that stuff. I'm going to have a lot of cool shit coming out, so can't wait. Jlev Comedy, follow me there. Uh, at Josh Accardo, joshaccardo.com. Edward? Uh, at McGowan Comedy on Instagram, at McGowan.com. Uh, email, email us. us. Our emails email us. We've been getting some emails. We got a, uh, It's workingclasscomedians at gmail.com. Send us some uh, thoughts about your job. Send us some thoughts about the podcast, whatever you want. Uh, We will see you guys again next week. You can listen to us on all major podcast platforms every Wednesday. You can follow us on Instagram at Working Class Holds. Also, make sure you watch the full show on YouTube. All you got to do is type in Working Class Holds. And please don't forget to rate us five stars and tell a friend. Come on.